Many people play video games fairly actively, but where did they come from, and why are they so popular today? To answer that question, we should take a deep dive into the history of the behemoth company Nintendo, and how a small toy company single-handedly saved the gaming industry. As an avid video game collector, and having researched about the company, I feel like I'm well informed about Nintendo's history and the role they played in the history of video games. If Nintendo hadn't saved the gaming industry in 1983, video games wouldn't be as popular as they are today. In fact, PlayStation wouldn't even exist today if it wasn't for Nintendo. We can find the roots of another of today's industry giants by studying Nintendo's history. Today, we will study Nintendo's history, how they single-handedly saved the video game industry from failure, and how they birthed their biggest rival, PlayStation. Nintendo had its humble beginnings as a toy company before becoming a gaming industry giant. It was founded on September 23, 1889, in Kyoto, Japan by a man named Fusahiro Yamauchi. Nintendo originally made toys and Hanafuda cards, which are Japanese playing cards used for gambling and playing games. The company struggled to find a foothold in the toy industry, going from the leadership of founder Fusahiro Yamauchi to his grandson, Hiroshi Yamauchi, in 1949. During the late 1960s, Nintendo employee Gunpei Yokoi created the Ultra Hand, a grabber hand toy which became the company's most successful toy yet. Later, in 1977, Nintendo entered the gaming industry with the Color TV Game 6, a Palm clone console. It didn't perform very well, selling only around 350,000 units in total. Soon after, Gunpei Yokoi, the same employee who had created the Ultra Hand, was supposedly riding a train when he saw a businessman fidgeting with a calculator. This gave Yokoi the idea to make a small, portable gaming system, which used similar technology to the calculators at the time. Soon after Nintendo's first true success in the gaming industry, the Nintendo Game & Watch was released in 1980, with one of its first titles being a game called Ball. However, a Pong clone and a few calculator-like handheld consoles were just the beginning. Let's take a look at how Nintendo gave new life to a dying game industry in 1983. On July 15, 1983, Nintendo struck gold with the Nintendo Family Computer, or Famicom, the first serious game console. The Famicom had interchangeable game cartridges, which was something that Nintendo hadn't done before. The system was extremely successful, selling 19.32 million units in Japan in total, which is a lot. At the same time, in 1983, the video game industry was dying. A lack of quality control from the popular gaming company Atari caused an overflow of poorly designed games such as E.T. for the Atari 2600 and a Pac-Man port to that same system. In the US, dumpsters were filling up with unwanted video games and consoles, and arcades were shutting down across the country. This was known as the Game Crash of 83, and at the time, if it wasn't stopped, video games would have been viewed as a fad and wouldn't be a staple in pop culture today. Fortunately, Nintendo came in to save the industry, redesigning their Famicom as the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES, in 1985. The NES was an immediate success in the States, selling 61.91 million units worldwide. Nintendo also used their Nintendo seal of quality, something they still use today, to ensure quality control in their games and products. Nintendo experienced a lot of success in their earlier years in the gaming industry, with their rival company Sega falling further and further behind in video game sales and popularity as the years went on. But Sega was far from Nintendo's biggest threat in the long run. Later, a failed partnership with the media giant Sony would give rise to one of their largest threats yet, the PlayStation. In the early 1990s, Nintendo partnered with the media giant Sony to ride the wave of popularity of CDs. CDs could hold more space than cartridges, which were previously used to hold video games and were far cheaper to produce. Determined to take advantage of this new hardware, Nintendo struck an agreement with Sony to create the Nintendo PlayStation. Yeah, it's weird to say. A disc-based add-on for the popular Super Nintendo console. However, Nintendo and Sony disagreed many times throughout the project's production, and by the time prototypes were developed, Nintendo and Sony had a falling out and the planned release of the Nintendo PlayStation was cancelled entirely. Sony, not wanting to waste their hard work that they'd put into their Nintendo PlayStation project, decided to create their own gaming system to rival Nintendo in the market. They officially joined the console wars on December 3rd, 1994 with the Sony PlayStation, becoming one of Nintendo's greatest rivals. In the end, Nintendo's saving of the gaming industry pushed them to become an industry giant today. Nintendo was a failing toy company before entering the gaming industry. 
They created the Famicom in 1983, saving the gaming industry from the game crash of 83 by bringing it to Western shores as the NES in 1985. Nintendo later partnered with Sony to create their Nintendo PlayStation. But its failure and the falling out of the two companies led to the creation of the Sony PlayStation. Nintendo is the sole reason why video games are still a thing today. By studying key points in their history, we can find the roots of modern gaming and even the history of another industry behemoth, PlayStation. So where did video games come from? Well, they didn't really start with Nintendo, but Nintendo is the reason why they're so important in our culture today. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you learned something about the history of the video games that you play today.